All right, hey everyone, Wonderbot here, and welcome to Vigil the Longest Night. The closest comparison I can come up with is Salt and Sanctuary, so side-scroller, Souls-like, maybe Metroidvania? Not sure, let's dive in. I'm a lazy bones, let's go easy. Is that a brain in a totem? All right. Investigate. Oh, nope, that's the wrong button. All right. Basic. Finally, you have arrived, Vigilant. Every Vigilant must return to take trial, so the ritual may end. Who are you? My name's always been swept, uh, has been swept away by the torrent of history. It matters not. Focus on the trial. Now is your time. Stand up and stride towards the light. You know what? Other game that I can think of off the bat is uh, Death's Gambit. This is giving me some pretty hard Death's Gambit vibes. You can save, load, and teleport at owl statues. You auto-save when you interact with it. You will lose proge progress when you die. You can use an owl's feather to teleport to the last owl statue you vi visited or fledgling's blood soul to create an auto-save. Got it. All right, so first and foremost, I'm going to go back into the sun. I'm going to turn this up. Turned it down by a bunch, but I think it's just a smidge quiet, maybe. Ah, we'll see how it goes. Back step to avoid enemy attack. And we can also roll. Hmm. Other one, maybe blood, little bit of blood stained in here. I'm definitely getting more Ska Studios from the, like, kind of the misty visuals. And the dodge. Improve skill. Layla gets one skill point when she levels up. Open the skill section, there are five skill trees. Okay, skills with four inward arrows can unlock special movements. Okay, and we've also got a chest. Chest's got gold. So how do we level? Skills, got it. So we got sword, axe, dual blade, bow, and general. General increases max HP. I'm gonna learn that. We'll specialize later. It's item mastery can throw items or cast arcane spell in the air during or during a combo. Uh, better stamina regain or better re potion recovery. What else do we got in here? Exhaustion duration. Okay, reduce stamina cost, restore stamina after a successful evasion. Poise will increase by 1% for every 2% drop in HP. Got it. Increases arcane, increases recovery speed of magic. Increases the number of consumables that can be carried. Chance that a consumable may not be consumed. Increases throwing, chan increases drop chances. Ooh. Reduces damage taken, reduces duration of negative effects. Damage taken. Well, attacking will reflect at a certain rate. Huh. When receiving deadly damage, ah, just revive. All right, I'm going to start with general because I have zero clue what the better skill trees are going to be. Okay, fall through platforms. Why is that choppy? Now, do we have uh, any other weapons? Nah, I was really hoping it would actually start me with a bunch of different weapons so I can immediately pick what I want. Okay. So we can also jump to climb up. Got it. Yeah, it's it's Salt and Sanctuary with like a little bit more fidelity, but it still has that weird fuzz. Stamina control. Stamina bar turns yellow. You'll be exhausted. During this period, your attack damage is halved and consumption is doubled. Once the stamina bar is drained, you need to stop, catch your breath. She'll be un unable to move for a time. Increase cardio and adrenaline skills to offset the negatives. Got it. Let's go the other direction real quick. Sh 
probably also make sure... Are there any heavy attacks? No. Ow. It looks like there might be something up there, but I don't see it. Question. If I go into the system... Video? Can I turn the bloom down? No. Brightness. On. Off. What does that even do? I'm not actually sure what turning brightness on or off does. I'll turn saturation on, I, I guess. Well, something happened. Whoo! You're an ugly creature! Okay, he leaped away. All right, that's a little spooky. Kind of avoid that. Yeah, so he's got kind of inner arms, so I have to be very careful about those. But it doesn't seem to be too much of an issue. Avoid for a second. Yeah, we're good. Where did I take so much damage? Come on, really? Well, is what it is. Now, it says progress is lost on death. Does that include all of the drops? Yes. So I have to go back and get everything again. Wow! Thank you, Brooks, for the... What is that? 11,500 bits. Thank you for all the enter entertainment with all that's going on in the world. Watching you has helped a lot. Well, thank you so much for the support, and I'm glad that I can make 2020 at least a little better. All right. So I think we level up again. Yep. So... Let's just go with that. But thank you. Dang. And welcome to kind of an indie game lightning round. I'm not entirely sure how lightning this lightning round is going to be. Uh, it's going to be a bit all over the place. I, The main problem that I'm running into this year especially, this year, recent years, is that too many games, not enough time to play them all. And so I have to pick and choose a little bit more aggressively. Let's see. But also, thank you for dropping by. Hey, we got a healing potion. I should probably use those. I should probably figure out how to use those. We got weapons. These are rings. Quick. Nothing on the quick slots side of things. Oh, quick items. Got it. Okay, healing potion equip. Wow, we have a lot of those, actually. Let's quick check. Controller. So heavy attack is Y. And use healing potion. Got it. I don't think we have one of these. The monitor might have to hire doubles to keep up. I... What I'm more likely to do is slowly move towards a... Oh! His shockwaves do damage to me. Okay, there we go. I think ultimately what I'm going to do is just move slowly away from more consistent series. And kind of focus... Ow. Well, at least the healing is quick. Uh, focus more on indie game lightning rounds and kind of more... Uh, honestly, more podcast-y stuff. I've been wanting to do that for years anyway. Uh, the... The traditional Let's Play format is... It's good, and is great for, like, finishing games. But there's no way I can finish everything, so instead... Let's just check everything out and see if it's good. And then really stick around for the good stuff. Okay. Let's increase stamina recovery rate by an amount. Oh. 
That didn't work. Alright, perfect. As for people that might ask why I'm playing on easy, same deal. It's just slightly faster. I find in a lot of games, difficulty just increases statistics and nothing more. You're stronger than we expected, Vigilant. We? Keep your questions and be silent. If you wish to end this nightmare, you must complete the ceremony. To complete the ceremony, you must defeat the gatekeeper and pass through the Porta Avernus. The gate of the dead. Look to the light. Let it guide you. Yeah, as far as side-scroller... Souls likes go. This ain't bad. Okay, go down the stairs. Got it. Well, I can safely say I'm not getting through there anytime soon. Now, do I heal when I'm at one of these owl statues? Yes. Cool. Alright, got some throwing knives, quick items, switch between quick items, and quick item wheel. I should probably use those throwing knives, but I'm going to be honest with you. I'm not going to. Elixir Syndrome is 100% in full force, always. Uh, let's just keep pumping it into stamina regain for the time being. Some games are better on hard, but not a huge difference in most. I, yeah, the only game that I think I can conclusively say had a better, harder difficulty, I... Fallout Frost, probably. Arcane item. Open inventory. Switch to arcane category to equip arcane items. Casting arcane items consumes mana when used. Hmm. Okay, we already know about that one, though. What I want is some kind of fireball or magic move, though I don't think spec into magic is going to be particularly doable. Anyway, uh, only games I can think of that the higher difficulty mode really made it feel good. Uh, Metro 2033 and its associated sequels. I found that Metro on Ranger difficulty just felt incredibly good. Uh, same thing with Fallout Frost. The the higher stakes gameplay without actually just making enemies absolute meatballs makes a huge difference in my end. Ow. Okay. Creepy. Because I'm not interested in, en in enemies being incredibly tanky. You know, maybe a couple here and there. Bosses and so on and so forth. But give me, give me enemies that, like, hit like trucks, but die fast, too. Feels better on my end. And also, thank you, Brooks, 1175, for the sub as well. Uh, to answer your question that I guess you asked before you drop the bits, I don't have notifications up on my screen because I know a lot of people watch these videos later on YouTube, and I figure that gets real distracting, having follower notifications and so on and so forth show up. So instead, I just have those off, and I just respond to them normally. If I can, if I notice, sometimes I miss them. It's also hard during multiplayer because definitely can't respond to that sort of thing. Okay, so we're back over here now. Having more reward for harder difficulty is always good, but the bullet sponges never are. Yup. Like, it worked well enough in Diablo 3. Okay, special actions. Block and absorb damage. Absorption rate is determined by the block absorption stat. Hold to charge. Launch critical attack. Switch arrows. Archery would be interesting for a game like this. I'm curious if we have... Whoops, why did I do that? Whatever, we'll get more. Steve's personal brew. Thieves will be found and killed. This is a specialty Bruna made for me. It's not for you, Steve. Don't even touch it. Graham. Open... Okay, equipment... Oh, we can even switch weapons. And we got some curved daggers. Well, I'll give him a shot. Alright, now we can scoot through here. And we can even save at the creepy-ass ow owl statue. Holy crap! That looks amazing. So is this a new game? Yep. 
Vigil the Longest Night came out today, uh, on Steam. If any of you guys do actually feel like uh, picking this up, by the way, I have an affiliate link uh, through the publisher, effectively. Woo, those daggers. Uh, so if you do feel like picking it up, uh, please make sure to use the link. Uh, search stream, I'll share it at the end. Uh, and for people watching on YouTube, it'll be in the description below. I I like affiliate links. I like them better than sponsored. Like, sponsored content for games. Because with an affiliate link, I feel like whatever I earn, I, I have earned. With sponsored videos, I always feel super awkward. And it's like, did I actually provide, you know, three, four hundred dollars worth of value? Ow. Actually, no fall damage. Interesting. There's an item over there, so I do kind of want to go for it. Let's see. I think hard difficulty is only better when it makes things more interesting. Yep. I'm in the same same boot. Stinky helmet. Oh, boy. Put that on. Oh. It's not something I can put on. Apparently we had a ring that gave me some extra stamina. Anything else? No, I don't think so. Well, good enough. Now, on the topic of difficulty, I actually feel like we're slowly getting into the era where difficulty is going to become a bit more nuanced. I've seen a number of games recently have accessibility options, and from my perspective, I feel like accessibility options are and should be the new difficulty. And we slowly move away from arbitrary, easy, medium, and hard. Because ultimately, those things don't really... Like, what does it even mean 90% of the time? Hey! <clears throat> like, I... To be entirely honest with you, I have no idea what easy, medium, and hard means in this game. Apart from, I maybe I do more damage, and maybe they do less. Or maybe health? Who knows? Uh, but I was playing Revita lately... And that just lets you slow the game down. Ekenfell lets you skip button prompt, like time button prompts, which is super nice. But I'd love to see games like this where you can actually just straight up scale how much damage you do, how much damage enemies do, how much EXP you gain. You know, or just slow enemies down by like 10%. Stuff like that would make difficulty settings so fun, because then I could fine tune it based on what I want as opposed to like some arbitrary meter. Go no further, outsider. <coughs> Go no further. Outsiders are not allowed beyond this point. Wait, I almost didn't recognize you. You changed so much. Daisy sent me a letter. Seems like she needed me. You picked a terrible time to return. Tangerine's hysterical and the monsters have been harrying the town for weeks. Crazy old Tangerine. How many times has Br Bruna run off now? Are we in double figures yet? Ha! <laughs> Don't be cruel. Bruna's been gone a long time this time. Or, uh, gone too long this time. Just head home and see your sister, okay? She's gonna be so pleased to see you. Huh. Have you... Have you heard the legend of the Glorious God? They were an independent organization that even the mistresses couldn't bring to heal after the Battle of Dickbrushire. Okay. The gate guard that defended against the fallen mistress became famous. To be considered a true guard, a candidate has to complete five rigorous tests. Did you know that? Never heard that before. That's because you don't read. Lots of ancient books mention it. They say a gate guard is kind of a symbol. I was born during the wrong era. Look at me, a mangy watchdog looking over nothing. Don't be so hard on yourself. The My guard... My guard defends the town. It's a very respectable job. You think so. It doesn't feel that way anymore. And... Me. My Bruna, Bruna, my Bruna's gone. Captain, I need to see the captain. I've searched everywhere, but I, all I found is a blood stain by the waterfall. Oh, goddess! Calm down, please. My baby daughter, my Bruna's gone. Bruna's missing again. Could it be that monster? No way. Even a puppy couldn't sneak in after the captain closes the gates. A monster could never get in. Then could you be with Graham? Remember on the Shimmerless Day last year? It was a similar incident. Don't you dare slander my daughter. Graham did this to her, that deceptive pagan. 
Oh, I see. There's three men. I didn't even notice the dude with the pot for some reason. Enough with this. You've, no you've never accepted Graham, but even a guard couldn't get Bruna out after the gate is closed. I promise. We'll continue the search, but please return home. Should Bruna, or should Bruna return, you should be there. Oh, my sweet one, where are you? Yes, yes, I should go home in case she comes back. I'm not used to dialogue in these games. You returned at a bad time. Maya is in chaos. Is there anything I can do to help? You seem different. The vigilant training has changed you a lot. If you want to really help, you could give her to the massive beast that's been stalking the town. So many guards have fallen already. The great furred beast with a gaping mouth? It's already dead. What? By yourself? Yes, by myself. Don't You don't believe me? Apologies, I was just shocked. This is wonderful news. I can't believe the strength of the vigilance. We need to recall our scouts. Can you send this message to the captain for me? He's waiting for my reply at the outpost. You'll find him upstairs. Huh. Dialogue. It's weirdly unusual for a Souls-like. Unfortunately, I'm losing my voice, so we're kind of limited here. I'm not going to talk to anybody. We're just going purely for the captain. God is... It's you. How long has it been? Are you back for this sh for shimless day? The vice captain wanted me to inform you that a large monster outside has been taken care of. Goddess, that's the best news we've had in some time, I assure you. I, I assume you did it, right? My gods had half your strength. We'd have found Bruna days ago. What do you think happened to her? It's ob the obvious answer is that Graham helped Bruna escape her overbearing mother, but it doesn't feel right. Could it be just a regular monster attack? Daisy mentioned their resurgence in the letter. That's one of the reasons I'm here. Tangerine insists that she saw bloodstains near the waterfall, and monster activity in that area has been particularly high recently. I hope you're wrong. Leave it to me. Daisy asked me to come home and help, and I intend to do so. Wonderful. I'll leave both cases to you, then. By the way, take this. We forged it for defeating that beast. But since you've already done so, it should be yours. Hey, big halberd. Let's see if that's any good. Woo! Boy, howdy. Actually, still pretty quick attacks, all things considered. Okay. My voice has been revitalized for but a moment. Oh, this guy's helmet. We found his stinky helmet. That's... okay. So I guess the stinky helmet was just straight up for that guy. I'm gonna kind of ignore a lot of this dialogue just because I straight up can't... Like... I'm gonna just st start coughing real bad. I... It's the combination of dryness and just some other stuff lately and it's just not great for me. Okay, somebody in prison? Eh, who cares? Let's go back down. Hey, thank you, Azrael of the Lust, for the 26-month reset. Thank you. Oh, let's see, Adonia's shop. What do we got? Oh, we can save in here. I yeah, hope you feel better soon. It's just a matter of, I guess, kind of, uh... Let's see. Throwing knife, Molotov, healing potion, so on and so forth. I feel like healing potions, especially. Can I just buy a shit ton of these? Holy crap. Ah, but we're capped at 10. I think. Interesting. So don't get more. Yeah. As far as feeling better soon, main trick is just don't talk too much. Don't stream for like 8 hours. Uh, try and keep it down and so on and so forth. Run the humidifier. And eventually my voice will just clear up a little bit. Okay. Yeah, it's just meaningless stuff. What about the smithy here? Okay. Isildora the manager. Oh, I see. So she keeps the stuff safe. Okay. So she stored all of those extra healing potions. Save this. None of this is the smithy, though. Ah, here we go. Oh, it's you. Well, you're here to take a look around. Blah, blah, blah. Okay, so we can trade, forge, and enchant. Forge. All equipment can be forged, except for rings to increase an item's abilities up to 150%. Shiver Stones brings it up to... 
1.5. So we don't have any Shimmer Stones. But it would increase the damage considerably. Enchanting. All equipment can be enchanted, enchanted except for ranked. There's six total. Each provides two unique abilities for armor and weapons. Ooh. Uh, let's see. Looks like you can only enchant once, but that's fine. So we can get a longbow. Uh, let's see. Better armor. Some arrows. Looks like they're pretty cheap. Defense poise. Also fire arrows. So I think I want to stay away from stamina cost stuff. What do I have for armor? So 4 defense, 20 poise versus... Oh, so these give me extra stamina. But they're quite pricey, so... I guess I'm going to just kind of ignore it for a little while. Do we buy the owl hat? Yeah. I'll buy a hat. We'll come back here later when I have way more money. Oh, mask. Yes, Bloodborne. I still want to do... I, I need to do a series on Bloodborne someday. I started one a long time ago, but I've I've never actually sat down to do like a full run of it. According to pace me, or pace the martyr, intense pain results in new understanding. Sacrifice and acquisition are synonymous instead of uh, causality. Beneath shimmering light, in the and in the palm of the goddess. Door is locked. Let's see. Healing potion. Fever, swelling, and pain. Topical application. Blah, 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 blah. Fair enough. Bought a PS4. The only game I played on was Bloodborne. Never touched again. Ooh. There have been some good PS4 games, but I understand. Kind of. I mean, limited time is limited time no matter what. Welcome to my theater. May not be as good as my theater, but real actors never limited by their venue, right? Come now, my wonderful audience. What a thrilling tale shall we? What thrilling tale shall I tell today? How about the time the heroic Mukdars bravely saf sacrificed his right hand to save a little girl from dastardly heretics? Little girl, is a tradition among desert tribesmen, cutting the throats of the sick. Which to save someone from this fate, you must sacrifice something extremely important. For the brave Mokdars, it was his right hand. It's a pity only he had one to give. For he had, had he a right hand, perhaps he could have blocked the arrow that pierced the little girl's neck. Such a sacrifice and all for naught. All in a world supposedly blessed by the goddess. So our tale is done. Come back another time. Huh. That was dark. Yeah, there's clearly... Ah, Okay. There's clearly a chest over here, but I don't know how to get to it. Maybe I have to break that. I don't know. I'm gonna just start skipping these things. Who are you? Okay, help me give your little sister her cake. Okay. So just... Give Daisy cake. But is Daisy not here? Or, no, is Daisy here? Oh, hi. Shimless Day is the most important day of the year, and there's so much to prepare. If she could be here, that would be nice. She must be out there somewhere, protecting people. Maybe she can come back home this year. It's been several years since the last time we celebrated her birthday together. It's my 16th birthday. She knew that for sure. Maybe I should clean the house, just in case, or prepare some of her favorite meals. And of course, my special blended drink. Wait, who's knocking at the door? Daisy, are you here? I'm back. Can you believe Cillian made a cake? That's Cillian? Daisy, where are you? Hexagonal candle. Used every year, and I always forget to buy a new one. Ceremonial costume. Have no idea where it is now. Have to borrow one. Ceremonial bell. If I can find it, I could just ask... I could try asking Sister Jasmine to give me another one. The world seems real dark. For a lot of reasons. I mean, I don't know. I find it interesting how Dark Souls' biggest impact has not been on action RPGs with 3D action games, but in but Metroidvanias. I, well, so the interesting thing is, it's 
symbiotic to some degree. Because Dark Souls, in essence, is a Metroidvania. At least the first one is. The later ones get less Metroidvania, but the first one very much has a lot of similarities. I'm the best marksman in the capital, and quite famous too. He's given the title by the Emperor himself. Thurber Wei's Songi. Master at deciphering, detecting, and tracking. That's why I'm here. Emperor gave me a task, and it's trickier than I expected. Never imagined the Emperor would be interested in heathen prophecies from a group of drug addled priests. No idea where to begin my investigation. Those charlatans run their mouths like. Uh, then men like me lose our lives over their cryptic words. This time I came, this time I came alone. Nobody else should die in there for ne their nonsense. Okay, well, I'll leave. Yeah, so we gotta get a double jump or something. I just want to keep adventuring. Plot? I don't know. Plot's okay. But so, I think the other reason why Dark Souls has had such an effect on Metroidvanias... Ooh, hello. A thief! Huh? It's a girl! She followed him and I followed her, following her. Why is she following the professor? She, her, her, she, my head hurts. I need a sacred... Wood medicine, young lady. Could you please give me my medicine for me? I have no idea where I'm going. There are three, or there are six essential items required for the ceremony. Though most of them can be reused, reused every year. The ceremonial bell can only be used once, so the church has has a church has a supply of them. I can't read right now. That's the big issue. Okay, you need a ceremonial bell? Here, please take one. Cool. Bye, I guess. I just want to go hit stuff again. Okay. Hopefully that guy will... will find his medicine for him somewhere out here. This seems about right, maybe. Or not. But the long ago, when the sun still shone, the flowers were so colorful. Not like nowadays. I wish I could have seen them. The crimson flowers. Crimson flowers. But why are you here alone? Where's your family? Take flowers here. I want to make a beautiful dress decorated with pretty flowers. That sounds lovely. Do you like flowers too? People have told me there are lots of special flowers near the cave in the mountains, but the adults say it's too dangerous to go there. But I've seen Bruno follow the professor into the cave before. Every time I send them flowers, they get so happy. So I think they must love flowers and go to the cave to pick more. Oh, well, we got a chest here, and I can't get that item. <coughs> ah. Yeah, keeping my voice up is not... I don't know. I don't know if I'm going to make his ring, ring of pain tonight. I'd like to. But I'm going to just turn into a mess if I go too long. I just want to hit stuff for just a little bit more. Anyway. Why are there more characters? Who are you? I just, it's people commenting, oh my god, why is this town so long? Why do I keep pressing that? Oh, I also leveled up at some point in this process. Uh, let's just keep doing stamina regen. Valley. Am I going the wrong way? I hope not. Climbing animation. For a 3D character, we we don't match the perspective on that ladder, and I'm not sure why. Alright. Hello, I'm here to kick ass and kick more ass. And I've leveled up again. My ass kicking. It was productive. There we go. Well, bye. Bat creatures. And yeah, the combat for this is good. The writing, I think it just needs less characters and like smaller town environments. They don't need to be that big. Anyway, uh, Dark Souls and Metroidvanias and the reason why Dark Souls has had such, effect, such an effect. Partly, largely just because the Metroidvania genre kind of... I'm going to say staled. That there wasn't a whole lot of progress for a while. And so, having kind of Dark Souls to set the, the scale and the tone for a lot of Metroidvanias in the future, it was an easy 
feel like there's supposed to be some character in here. In that weird puppet thing. Okay. Corner of cloth scrap, so probably Daisy or Bruna or whatever. Uh, but, you know, the Estes flak, flask, the stamina management, the harder gameplay, the overall pacing and structure, it, it was a good way to say, like, hey, this is how you put together a good Metroidvania. And I think people really latched on to that idea for the genre as a whole. And I've definitely seen some, like, other Metroidvanias go other directions. But that the ones that use a lot of the similarity similarities, the similar mechanics that Dark Souls uses, they feel... it feels right in comparison. Uh, so, easiest example I can think of would be Hollow Knight. Hollow Knight is an absolute masterpiece, and a lot of those mechanics are very Souls-like-y. What the... devil? Do you hear? The great deity howls and waits to rip the earth asunder, to rise from flesh and blood. Okay, so it's the same. We got creepy cult people. Okay! Don't jump down there, I guess. But yeah, Hollow, Hollow Knight is amazing. It's it's still one of my favorite games of all time, and will remain as such for who knows how long. Oh god damn it! How far did I get kicked back? I got kicked back a ways. Shoot. Well, it's okay. Unlike a lot of other Soulvania kind of things. I would argue this one's probably one of the more forgiving. It doesn't have really bullshit platforming. As far as I know, there's no fall damage unless you fall into a death pit. And because I've got this on an easier difficulty, most of the enemies go down in like two hits. Which I kind of like. Flip side, the other reason why the kind of split with the Metroidvania and so on and so forth... Uh, the reason why that's kind of awesome for me is it also means that the, the genre has widened. Oh, hey, we do have a giant map. I like that. What's a good exit? Good way of describing this? I, genre widening is something I don't think I've ever heard anybody ever talk about. But there are points in game development history where... A revolutionary game came out, and it more or less changed the face of a genre. Easiest example I could think of would be Doom. Well, admittedly, kind of Doom for a lot of reasons. But Doom was... ostensibly... one of the... one second. Can I... Can I safely get down here? I don't think so. I mean, it killed the shit out of me the last time I was there, so... I'm gonna write that entire lower area off. But... Doom was very much the first 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 person shooter and then everything else within kind of the genre followed the Doom formula for a while and then at some point somewhere between Half-Life and Halo step in an elevator to activate it elevator will begin moving immediately Uh, let's see, so wants this one. Oop. There we go. Oh, but we need the lever to actually activate it. Yeah. Uh, so Doom started the genre. I think there were kind of first person shootery things before that point, but none of them were particularly successful from what I know. Is this the creepy cave? Pale red. I bet the professor Doctor, whatever dude has just been luring people in here and been doing weird, horrible things. It's usually the case. Bloody iron nail. And there's the lever. There we go. 
But the moments Halo, Half-Life, and maybe Call of Duty? I know Call of Duty... What's it Call of Duty that added the uh, regenerating health? And every single time one of those games came up with those mechanics, it evolved the genre, but it also widened it. That, you know, nowadays, it's actually really refreshing when somebody comes out with a proper old-school Doom clone. Uh, the easiest example I can think of most recently, I really liked Void Bastards. And there's no other games like it right now. And so it stood out in such a novel way. Let's see. Can I just go through here? I can. It stood out in such a novel way that... You know, it was really fun to come by. And it made the whole game... I guess stand out in a way... Nope, door's locked. It made it stand out in a way that, like... Refreshed my interest in first-person shooters. Same thing with Bioshock. Bioshock, I think, was one of the first... Well, I mean, Bioshock, System Shock. It was one of the first... I'm just gonna wait for that to happen. Creepy. Luckily, I got the reach. Now, let's just stay away from him for a second. Okay, there we go. This was... This was the closest I've come to success. Perhaps the faithful adept, uh, faithful adept, ad adapt. Blah. Better to crimson. Could the sacred wood really be part of an ancient religious tradition in Shimmer Faith? It's fascinating, but the world words on the ancient scrolls are so difficult to translate. I wish I understood more. Okay. Yeah, this is like a weird dog monstrosity but with nails and shit just in it what's another good example of genre widening I guess actually probably one of the best slay the spire roguelikes for a while were very limited to a couple different uh, subgenres and types and now with slay the spire coming out we are just being inundated in really good deck builder roguelikes because there's actually room in the genre for a lot more of these games. And it slowly increases the amount of variety that we would normally, you know, just be inundated with. Binding of Isaac, binding of Isaac clone after Binding of Isaac clone. And then eventually, you know, the, the game types that haven't been seen in a while, uh, they start to see a resurgence. So there have been a bunch of really good monster collection games lately, and I'm really stoked about that. Uh, let's see. Increases arcane, recovery of... Increases recovery of magic. The problem is I don't have a fireball spell, so I'm not really sure if I want to go down this direction yet. Here, let's actually look at a weapon. I'm not super interested in bow. It seems like it might actually be really good. Attack and poise damage when equipped with dual blades. Whoa, that's a big damage bonus. See, reduces the recovery time of a normal attack. Charge can't be interrupted. Ooh, automatic cast a finish slash after whirlwind. Huh. Let's see. So attack increases by three. Poise, backstab damage, stamina cost of dual blades. I mean, honestly, I'm liking the big axe, so let's let's just own big axe for the time being. I've got the rest of what I need. Uh, let's see. Not all roguelikes are Metroidvanias. Not all Metroidvanias are roguelikes. Oh, are we talking? Are we talking about the differences between Metroidvanias and roguelikes? Yeah, they're wildly different. I. Uh, so Metroidvania is. I would, I guess both are umbrella genres, but I think Metroidvanias are more specific. Roguelikes are, by nature, kind of... It's super... Uh, roguelikes are super broad because, it, effectively, a roguelike is just a, a game that is procedurally generated with permadeath and is generally kind of hard. 
a Metroidvania, this is a Metroidvania. The only thing in my head that matters about a Metroidvania is the map. Everything else about a Metroidvania is almost interchangeable, except for, I guess, the, uh, the permanent progression of power-ups that you find while exploring the world. Uh, so, for example, finding a double jump, or a speed run, or a fire suit that makes it so you don't get set on fire so you can explore. Uh, mostly Metroidvania, in my head, in essence, is just exploration. Pale red, one spoon, slight nausea, safe. Two spoons, nausea, safe. Three spoons, violent vomiting, containing blood, limb swelling, safe. Four spoons, skin cracking, bleeding from orifices, death, unsafe. Why is number three still considered safe, you monster man? Yeah, think all the night for Metroidvania. Honestly, think this for Metroidvania. This is a little, this is a little linear. So I'm not actually sure if this is a, a proper Metroidvania or just a linear platformer with a Metroidvania style map. Because I think it's the latter. But who knows? Hey. Secret door. I like the shortcuts, but usually with a Metroidvania, you have to care a little bit more about, like, which path you're taking through. And you're hunting for secrets to find all the goodies so that you can, you know, progress, I guess. This is much more just kind of go in a direction, fight stuff, find loot. Helps that the loot is fairly easy to find along the way. If you survive, uh, it's safe. I I mean, I guess that's the logic for this guy, but from my perspective, I would not willingly take any kind of medicine that would cause me to vomit blood. You know? Like, I, that's a, that's a solid no for me, dog. Oh, right, that's the one that requires the, uh, the key, which I can't do yet. Let's see, so we want to go down here? Yeah. Yeah, there, there are absolutely a couple of situations where that sort of thing would be acceptable. Are those piles of bodies in the background? Yes. I'm pretty sure this is a boss fight. Oh, sweet! Jesus! I think I found Bruna! Broodmother! That would explain the... Ow. Okay. Heal up. So maybe dual daggers are actually worth specking into. potions are incredibly cheap so we can just I keep trying to jump over her arms which actually is not how you're supposed to do this which is messing me up in the worst possible way well found Bruna and we've learned double jump why are those laggy am am I free please you must take this and enter the graveyard or more blood will flow I hope my foolishness will cause n not cause more tragedy. Tell me, who did this to you? Oh, Graham, my beloved Graham, I hope you haven't done anything stupid. May the goddess guide you. It was Graham all along, cemetery key. And now we've got double jump. So, we have one more door in here, but it might be locked. There's the... Oh, there's the death pit, which is right above us. Some kind of passage in the valley... I don't actually know where the graveyard is. Well, I will just wander aimlessly, as is 
what I do. Hello, Vigilant. We meet again. You again. The trial has a different meaning for everyone. For you, it's very different indeed. Defeat the gatekeeper, pass through the port of Verners, and end this nightmare. Perhaps you'll be the one to finally succeed. All right, and with that, that's a pretty good stopping point, at least for here and now. I really like this game, in a way that even Slay the Spire, Death's Gambit, and even some Souls games don't quite capture. I think a lot of it has to do with the talent tree system. I'd love to see them go deeper with it, but obviously it's a little bit too late on, on this one. But if there's ever another one, just more things, more abilities, more cool perks that you can kind of pick up for each weapon. But maybe that's also what the, the magic the enchantment system is going to be. So who knows? Anyway, uh, so I guess before we go, uh, if you guys do feel like picking this game up, I actually have an affiliate link uh, down below in the description. And so if you do decide to pick it up as a result of this video, uh, please follow that. And I actually get a small cut of the profit, which, I mean, entirely optional, but it would be very appreciated. And apart from that, I, not too much. I'm going to play a little bit more of this, maybe a lot more of this. It really depends on how you guys feel. I got one more episode filmed and ready to go, and I'd love to play more. Because it gets kind of weird, and I'm curious about how it goes. And you guys haven't even, even seen me start spinning yet, really. Uh, things are going to get exciting. Anyway, so with that, if you guys like this episode in any way, shape, or form, leave me a like. Helps more than you know. And if you want to see more, hit subscribe because I've got a lot of rad new indie games and I got a little bit more of this too. Uh, so with that, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.